Hey everyone, welcome back to the Punk Rock Horror Podcast Band Showcase episode where we bring on underground and upcoming bands to give them that spotlight they need and so rightly deserve. Today I was honored to be joined by the band Become Ethereal and I had a great time talking with this band and I feel like I do say that to every single band that comes on and it's true, I enjoy talking to all of them and I think the reason I enjoy talking to all of them is because you get to hear from bands who who you know haven't fully made it yet who are putting in you know blood sweat and tears to make their music and to make it work and i think become ethereal is just another great example of that you know it's a three-person band woman fronted and they don't have a drummer so they use a drum machine and i think that's what i love about this band is that even though they don't have a drummer they keep going and doing shows and making music and i love that about them because i remember back in the day when i was trying to get bands going we were, you know, really waiting on drummers, and because we never got drummers, it all kind of fell through. And, and I, so I just love that uh, perseverance to keep pushing through and to use a drum machine. And even that aside, these guys make great music. They're fun to talk to. They're dorky, and I love that about them because, well, I mean, you've been listening to us for a while, and you know me and Cody are dorky. And they're just really great people. So with enough being said, um, real quick before we jump into it, please stay tuned to After the Episode for an exclusive song from them that they sent us. And also, while you're at it, follow and like their links and give them some support as well. And if you're a band that wants to come on the Band Showcase episodes to get promotion for your band, please feel free to reach out to us at our email, podcast at gmail.com. With that being said, let's jump into the interview. I am really excited to have Mariana, James, and Mike from Become Ethereal. How's it going, guys? Great. Doing awesome. We're glad to be with you today. Glad to have you on. Now, uh, pure and simple, uh, I want to get it out of the way. Become Ethereal. Not only is that just a catchy title, but just seeing your live sets is very unique because you guys, it's you're a three-person show playing this metal music so let's jump into it how did become ethereal uh become to be without sounding redundant sure so um we always wanted to get a band going mike and i have been friends for years really sure we had the right talent for singing and that's very hard to find and we just wanted to do something a little different uh we both like metal but we wanted to make sure the priority of the band was to be musical first so good you know, theory-based music with just the metal style. And then we were super lucky and fortunate to find Mariana, and she added that uh, that extra magic, like the mysticism of her clean vocals that uh, just kind of gave us that vibe. And we all like fantasy, so we're like, we're going to, you know, become ethereal, and uh, we're going to kind of do something a little different, be a little unique. I think doing something different and doing something unique definitely hits on it correctly. I mean, again, coming to your live shows and even you have some of your clips from your live shows uh, on your Instagram and it's looks like you guys just usually use a drum machine and you're playing instruments and singing at the same time. Um, did you guys, how did this come to be w- without including the drummer? Kind of out of necessity. <laughs> we We did it as a way to fill in the gaps without having to worry too much about relying on people. Initially, James and I had done a talent show one time with another friend who was playing guitar, and we thought, we're just showing off our guitar and bass skills here. We don't need to hire a drummer for this quick show, and the digital drums now are are so good compared to what they used to be that it's really not a problem. And it also gives us the opportunity to put a little bit of a backing track to the music besides just the drum. A lot of uh, success depends on how many variables you allow. And so being dependent on a drummer is very, very difficult. Uh, Finding a drummer who's reliable and won't stab you and all that stuff is is, uh, and who's talented is, is no easy task. So we figure one day we'd love to have a drummer who's skilled to give it the human touch. But if we don't need to have a drummer who, you know, we have to make sure he comes to practice and all that good stuff, then that's just one more way we can uh, increase our chances to be successful. 
I will say, that is good to find a drummer who will not stab you. A lot of them seem to come with that prerequisite a lot of times. It's tough. <laughs> I mean, they have the sticks, man. It's so easy to do so. <laughs> their arms are in shape from all the swinging. They're just ready, you know. It's just, you know. And, they're, and they're right behind you. Your back's turned. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, it's behind the beat, too. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> as far as our, our sound goes, you know, Mike's always been a fan of symphonic metal. He loves the, the clean female vocalist. I've always thought clean vocals were excellent. Like, a, I wouldn't be opposed to a Josh Groban singing over a metal track, to be honest. Uh, but Marianne is fantastic. We couldn't have been more fortunate. And it really came together. We really gel well as a musical team. And so we just like that we're self-sufficient just as a trio. And then loading our gear, that's like a, a secondary benefit. It's awesome. So. Perfect. I would definitely say you do have a very pinpoint of symphonic inspiration in your singing, especially with Mariana's uh, reach that she has doing the vocals. I mean, has it always been in a decision to go in the symphonic, clean vocal direction or was it just, you know, let's like we like this. Let's stick with it. You know, I've been writing these songs for a long time, and my initial thought was we're going to be as I lay dying. We're going to be Lamb of God, just brutal metal riffs. And it's definitely been a refinement process um, towards getting to this direction. And it's been a lot of help from Mike and the new additions. We've added the keyboard recently, within the last month or so. So it started from humble metal guitar riffs. And then Mike brought in musical theory. We brought in the, the musical vocalist. And always appreciated symphonic musical metal. But uh, I thought it was out of our reach. So being able to achieve that is exceeding my expectations. Well, I want to throw a little more praise to you, the three of you specifically. I mean, the the fact that you're coming up on stage and you're playing in a symphonic style, usually we see these type of bands playing with, like, five-plus members making the symphonic metal. And the three of you are coming on, you're putting your heart and your passion into it, and you can really see it when you're actually playing that you have this passion for it. Do you ever have any doubts or, or feel like you had to come over some sort of humps before you go on stage, just being the three of you? Um, I mean, I do only because I haven't performed in like a few years. Like this is my first band that's not like an after school kind of program. So I feel like that way because metal is never my scene. Like this is a whole new genre for me to write for. Um, I guess I can't speak for the dudes, but I definitely... This is a whole new thing, so I definitely have to kind of pump myself up. But I think we've been doing really well, so. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, you know, I like it because I think it makes each one of us unique and a star in a sense. I'm covering the guitar, Mike's handling the bass, backup vocals. Our singer is, you know, the star. And so each person has a unique role to fill. There's no doubles going on. And, you know, uh, confidence is key. I feel, you know, fully confident for our music that... uh People from any walk of musical enjoyment could appreciate our music. I've had people come up to us at the show and say, you know, I don't like metal music. I don't like heavy music, but I like what you guys were doing. And that is the number one goal. We want to be enjoyed by any kind of folks. We want to be able to play with any kind of other bands. We don't want to be too heavy or too light for any venue. So I, I feel confident about it. There were some initial struggles for me. And it's really because we're doing something that not a lot of people have done. And when we get there and we're trying to balance the, the sound engineering, when there's not a live drum kit there, especially playing with a group of members that does have that. So being able to monitor ourselves properly to be able to hear what's going on, that's been initially stressful. But the last show, we really nailed it where we felt comfortable with what we could hear and what we were projecting out to the crowd. Sound guy was we were, excellent. Right. Excellent sound guy. We were able to really let it go and perform rather than focus harshly on making sure the music is, you know, what it needs to be. One day we would love to add a drummer, you know, uh, give it the human touch. Right now our drum machine is called, uh, drum machine is called No Fills McGee. We'd love to get a keyboard, a real virtuoso, someone who can just, you know, you know, tickle the keys, tickle the ivory, all that stuff. Right now, you know, I have very limited musical knowledge, and I'm, you know, recording the keys one finger at a time. So eventually we'll get a star-studded team, but 
it's been pretty fun and pretty cool just handling it, the three of us. And it's nice because we all work together so well, we're not worrying about having to rely on maybe a other element to come in the group that could, you know, disharmonize things. So a lot of fun. I feel confident about it. So talking about feeling confident, talking about taking on new things, Mariana, you said that you've never written for metal before or even metal lyrics before. Um, what was the drive to get you to start writing metal? And, and what was that inspiration for you to take it on? Um, I mean, to be honest, I was actually just looking for a band and musicians to make music with because that's really just what I wanted. Um, and I post, posted like an ad on something called KSL, which is, you know, like our version of Craigslist over here in Utah. And um, I found these guys and I don't know, I didn't actually really know it was a metal thing when we started talking until like our first time meeting up. Um, but again, I just didn't want to waste an opportunity. And I do think that Symphonic Sonic Metal, you know, Evanescence, Nightwish, all those guys have something that fits my voice and my range. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, it got me kind of excited once I started listening to more metal bands. I just, you know, growing up, that wasn't something I did. So We lucked out completely. She put her ad on KSL, which is kind of like our wholesome version of Craigslist here in Utah. That's what she just said, but that's cool. Yeah. Okay. It's the wholesome <laughs> version, all right? It's not as scary and seedy. You don't get abducted on KSL at nearly as much I'm as you sure do you on KSL. Okay. It's like 50% less abduction rate. Um, but Are you guys sponsored by KSL? Is, is that it? <laughs> yes. She had a lot of people reach out to her, but we, we were so lucky. She said she had a decent vibe from us, and she liked our music. So we just hit the jackpot, quite honestly. The singer we reached out toward and it was just a perfect fit. And when we got together, we started running, and we never stopped. We were immediately rehearsing. She was writing lyrics, great lyrics that fit our songs, great vocal melodies. We started recording uh, her voices at a, a good friend of ours who has an excellent sound set up at his home. And so it just it got clicking and moving right away. So it sounds like it's it's kind of like how the Avengers came to be or how the A-Team came to be. People from different backgrounds with different inspirations coming for one common goal, and that's to make music. And coming back to your live shows and the clips that I've even seen on Instagram, you guys definitely have this, and I do mean this as a compliment, as a fucking mentality. Like, look, there's three of us. We have a drum machine. We're going to go out there. We're going to fucking rock shit. How has that reception been for you guys, you know, playing these shows and bringing out this unique style and this unique band to the masses? I feel like it's a great time. I've been in bands before, and I've played in orchestras and been doing stuff that, sure, I liked it, but I wasn't absolutely passionate about it. And now that I know our music is something that I enjoy to listen to 100% of the time, I feel like we've all got enough control over the music that we can play something we enjoy in every song. It doesn't matter as much what what the people think because when they see that we like it, that helps draw them in, is my opinion. And they can tell that we're enjoying what we're doing and it makes it more possible for them to enjoy it as well. I really get a kick out of being a spectacle. So when people are paying attention to me, it turns that fire on and makes me go a little more wild than I would normally as well. Yeah, it's just been really, it's fun. So like I said, this is my first real band experience. So I get really hyped up knowing that it's like, these are my words, like my melodies that I created. Um, and obviously with James and Mike's help, I'm not saying this is a little bit of help. Thing. Like for sure, little. they've helped a lot. But um, I don't know, it's just really empowering as a singer to be able to get up on stage and be like, yeah, this is my original work and I'm proud of it. So. Well said. Yeah, oh, go ahead. People, people dig it. You know, we, we're not trying to be heavy. We're not trying to be harsh. We're trying to sound good. And yeah, we have a lot of double bass and distorted guitars, but uh, Mike makes sure that we are using correct musical theory. And we have a very, you know, uh, the vocals I think is, is what really helps to have broad appeal. We don't want to alienate people with, uh, you know, uh, certain styles. So the feedback has been good from people, you know, who don't even really like metal. That's what I've been getting back from a lot of folks. 
Perfect. I, I mean, it it sounds like your guys' passion for this and your love for it is bringing the bre- best out of people. You're not too worried about changing things around to accommodate people. You're just wanting to do it for your own vision. And I think with that, you're bringing out that same energy from the people who come to see you guys. And just whether it's headbanging or dance, they can find that niche within your music. And I think that's what I really like become, about Become Ethereal's music. And speaking of a bit of your music, we, we have a few of your songs that uh, you sent to us uh, called Shadows of History, Second and Daydream, and Oath to Honor. I want to ask about each one of these songs, or at least one of them, whichever you want to touch on. Where did the inspiration for these songs came to be? Sure. Um, which one? Second and Daydream, Oath to Honor, and Shadows of History. So... Mariana wrote the lyrics for all of them. She came up with the titles for all of those. Uh, they're particularly old songs. We've had the guitar on those for many years. Um, but yeah, they, they each give a little something different. Stuck in a Daydream was written to be kind of like a radio single. Three minutes, 30 seconds, nice and poppy. Uh, Shadows of History has, you know, it shows off some decent guitar riffs and, uh, it's kind of like a fast paced song and then Oath to Honor, we're just, we were trying to make an epic, you know, have a nice epic for the album and almost like a, not a ballad, but yeah, an epic piece. And uh, I think they, they each shine in their own way for a different purpose. And then Mariana can get into the subject matter of each song because it's pretty cool stuff. Oh, yeah. On Spotlight. All right. Well, um, I'll talk about Stuck in the Daydream first because that was actually the first song that I wrote lyrics and melodies for. Um but I read this thing online once called maladaptive daydreaming, which I don't think it's a real sciencey thing. I think it's like a new thing. Basically, it's how some people daydream in a way where they kind of like get away. And, and I realized as a kid, I did that a lot. I didn't want to hang out with people. I would just go in my room and like create worlds. So that was just kind of what that's about. It's just kind of getting stuck in your head and being able to like realities like melting away and things like that. Um, and then Shadows of History was my environmentalist song, so it's kind of about how we we're destroying the planet, you know, corrupt, like, corporate governments and, like, corporations are destroying the planet. So it's like my, you know, Earth Day song, which I guess if you listen to the lyrics, it's kind of self-explanatory. And then... Good message. Yeah, right? Like, what up? And then um, Oath to Honor was actually... We're all big fans of the Skyrim game, and so, um, and that's actually pretty sure where James got the inspiration for Become the Theory of Death, right? <laughs> anyway, and so that's actually kind of just about that, because I love that video game, and it's about thieves, and Mike wrote the Latin part for it. Mike, do you want to say what the Latin means in it? Sure. When we had that song, it was, it was my favorite pre-written song that James has as far as heavy metal goes, and... I thought, this is the song that's epic. He agreed. And I thought, we need to have a Latin chant. Something that makes it just seem like it's from another time. And I started thinking of all the cool uh, phrases I had heard of in Latin. Everybody says carpe diem or whatever. But uh, the one I found that I thought was cool was corvus oculum, corvi non eruit, which it's a a famous line about a famous court case, and every time I'm on the spot, I forget the name of the person. But uh, he was supposed to testify against uh, someone who he may have been in cahoots with, uh, and what it means is a crow does not pluck out the eye of another crow. So solidarity and honor amongst thieves is the idea there behind that Latin phrase. It looks like James has something to add to that exactly the song kind of revolves around that mindset is honor amongst thieves solidarity and sometimes when you're dealing with an oppressive unjust authority uh deception can actually be the moral uh way to go and actually the way that's vital for survival so it's basically sometimes to, to walk the path of honor you have to be secretive you have to kind of not play by the rules when you're dealing with with that situation. So I we think it's awesome. A little bit based off the Thieves Guild, maybe, from Skyrim. 100%. But okay. that's badass, so. I love it. I, I, I love it. I was actually going to ask you about the hymn, too, in Oath to Honor, because I was really getting down to that. I actually listened to it a few times, just because I really 
enjoyed how you guys wrote it and and played it. Not that I didn't enjoy the other songs as well, but that one really stuck out to me a lot. I just I really enjoyed it. So bravo. Um, Thank you. Yeah, we love it. It's a good one. So, become ethereal. Um, is there a reason behind the name become ethereal? And what projects does become ethereal have coming up in the future that we can let all the ghouls and gals know about? As far as projects go, we've got some shows lined up. We're still trying to record uh, some of our more complete songs. But in Ogden, Utah, on the 7th, we're playing at the Sand Trap, the 7th of September, of course. Yeah, three shows for September. Right, and then 9-11 at the Loading Dock, downtown Salt Lake City. And then it may be one of our biggest venues yet, Kilby Court, which is a pretty popular place here. That's K-I-L-B-Y. On the 22nd. So we've right, got a lot of shows lined up. We're actually talking about very soon going and laying down another vocal track with our buddy Paul, who has done the five that you see on YouTube and Facebook. Yeah, we have about six or what, six or seven more songs that we have the guitar and keys and bass, all that stuff for. We got to get, I mean, Mariana has amazing lyrics for these songs. They're beautiful. We got to get these laid down, but it takes time. So, yeah, we have. We have a good amount of material in reserve that we just need to get the vocals that are already written laid on. So that's kind of another priority. We're doing shows. We're coming out with merch. Uh, but we want to try to get our full material that we have, uh, you know, recorded so people can hear the, the full version of it. You might have seen that we, unlike a lot of bands, we're wearing our own shirts on stage. Because they're Cause awesome. Because we, we love our logo so much. And we're proud of it, so we don't have to pretend that we're too cool to wear our own merch. My sister has done an awesome job. She started making t-shirts as a a personal business. Uh, it's called Runs with Scissors. And I had been wearing this, this black shirt with sparkly gold on it for some time. And I guess we all decided that we loved it, and that became our main go-to shirt was or dragon or wyvern, if you want to be nerdy like me. Black and gold. Black and sparkly gold just worked out. Color of become ethereal. And when we were we were thinking of band concept art, there's many beautiful mythical symbols. The phoenix. So many symbols. Swords. But we said, let's just go right to that top. The dragon is the ultimate mythical creature or symbol. And then it just kind of came organically. We all love gold. Uh, you know, or whatever his name was. Uh, there's something about gold that just strikes to the heart of me and Mike, so I'm sure Mariana is appreciated too. So we said, we're going to have a dragon, and then uh, it just kind of went that way where it was a gold dragon, and then for the shirts it was a bejeweled, fabulous gold dragon. So we're quite happy with it. And our local artist, Mackenzie Crump, she she actually works at our office job, and she 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 whipped up that art. She's amazing. She does portraits and all sorts of stuff upon request. So we are super lucky. It all kind of came together. We had a lot of assets at our fingertips, and we just took advantage of every opportunity we had to get this going. Beautiful. And, and by the way, I'm going to say that I we also wear our own merch, and I think it's kind of awesome when a band chooses to wear their own merch. I mean, right. uh, no thing. I, Never really understood that concept either, either of not wearing your own merch, but uh, I mean, to each their own, I suppose. I feel like it's such when you're starting out, like, you know, gotta advertise. It makes it easy. It's a band uniform. Now, Mariana always looks fabulous up there. She can do whatever she wants, but for me, you know, I, I get my fashion cues from Johnny Bravo, so, you know, wearing the band shirt helps out a lot, so. And, and Johnny Bravo's a fashion icon. I mean, everybody looks to him for sure. That's right. So uh, we got about eight minutes. Um, if you guys don't have to head out too soon, I do have one more question I'd like to throw your way, and then we'll uh, talk to where people can follow you and support Become Ethereal. Uh, do you got yeah. time? Yeah, of course. Perfect. So one question that we ask all the bands that come on this podcast and come on this show is is probably our favorite question to ask, and that is, what is the craziest sto- thing that you've seen or uh, witnessed or been a part of at a metal show in this situation? For each one of you, what is the craziest that you're okay with talking about on the show? I've lived a very sheltered, uninspired life. No, I'm just kidding. Um, 
I would say not too many crazy things. I was at a Lamb of God show at the venue here in Salt Lake City, and a guy climbed up into the rafters and then fell into the crowd, and Lamb of God actually stopped playing. That's how wild it was. You know, they, they, they wanted to make sure he wasn't dead. You know, they don't need another death on their hands. Um, so, yeah, that's probably for me, but I've lived a pretty safe, charmed existence, so that, that's the top. James doesn't even remember. We went to Megadeth. And Children of Bodom was opening for them. You know, the Scandinavian black metal Children of Bodom. Yes. And uh, they opened for Megadeth, which, to me, it wasn't that close of a fit. But there was a guy, who, I don't know what his problem was, ended up getting in a fight with a security guard. Oh, yeah. And he, <laughs> he got his ass thrown out the side door of this uh, venue in Salt Lake called The Complex. That was pretty funny. Poor guy. And he was fighting back, but we watched that door get kicked open. He got thrown out there. He was still mad. Yeah, I've been to some good shows. I saw Amon Amar live. That was great. Megadeth was an inspiration, even though we don't sound like Megadeth. They were kind of an inspiration to pick up a guitar because they did so many wild things. Uh, yeah, I've seen some good shows, but, you know, the place never burned down and no one, you know, <laughs> nothing too wild. But I've never been to a metal show, so sorry. She's young. She's our young star. No, it's because in like when I was younger, like I went to cute like Owl City concerts. They're like, I don't know, all fun broke. So, you know, there's that. It's less outrageous, but more blew my mind. This I reminded myself when I saw Children of Bodom as the headliner. Uh, Illuvity opened for them, and I brought my bro- brother along. He didn't know anything about metal, and after they were done, he's like, "Wow, that was a great show! I couldn't believe it." We, you know, all the walls of death and mosh pits and stuff. I had to tell him, dude, that was the the opener. The real show's about to start. And I couldn't believe the insanity of being in a pit with hundreds of metal fans who knew every of those shake their devil horns at the right time, uh, just getting smashed together. But I can't pronounce his name. Alex Leo, when he did the, the double devil horns, over his arms, and, you know, they, like, strike thunder at the time that his hands came together. Right. That was mind-blowing how awesome somebody could be on stage, essentially being worshipped because he's so damn good playing the lead guitar and the vocals at the same time. He's okay. Oh, he's whatever. Just, <laughs> he, uh, he's, he's, no, he's not that good. Uh, well, I'm having a great time talking to Become a Theory. I'm having becoming a great time talking to the three of you. This is a blast. Unfortunately, we are getting close to the end of this episode. But before we get there, I want to tell the ghouls and gals where everyone can check you out and what can they do to support Become a Theory. So where can they go? Well, we're on all the social medias. We have Facebook, Instagram. We have a Twitter. We're not the best at linking our Twitter to stuff, but YouTube. We got videos of our stuff on YouTube. Music videos, um, expertly shot by Mike's wife, who's excellent with the camera. But it would be Instagram would be become ethereal underscore is the name there. Mm-hmm. And on YouTube, it's become ethereal band. And then Facebook has everything. Everything links to the Facebook. I know that's you know yeah, a little old, you, but you know. Well, and if you get our Instagram, you also there's links to our Facebook and stuff there too. So. Um, but honestly, if you're in the Utah area, biggest support is coming to our shows. We're going to have um, shirts, buttons. Yeah. We will do autographs to any part of the body. But honestly, to other listeners, just finding us online and sharing and giving us your feedback. Not to mention, enjoy something that's awesome. Yeah. Perfect. I, very well said. And I do have to say, Become Ethereal is very awesome. Talk about a group of people coming together, again, to just create music for the fun of creating music and Mm -hmm. seeing your live shows. I get all the clips from your live shows. You have this very warm atmosphere of just playing your music and having fun. And and I know that sounds very basic and very cliche, but that is something as a a music goer and concert goer that I do appreciate out of a band. And you guys have that in boatloads. So bravo. Thank you, thank you. Thank yeah, you. we just want to have fun and make good music. We're not trying to be metal. We're not trying to be anything. We're just trying to do what we think is awesome. So I hope that. Yeah, hope I'm glad that's translating to the to the audience. I think it's gonna get more true as I do more shows with these awesome guys. I get more and more comfortable. My knob keeps getting cranked up. So I think. This is just the beginning. There's more to come. You might see uh, things get a little bit crazy. We're only three. We're only three shows in, so this is just the beginning. 
Perfect. Well, there you have it, ghouls and gals. Become Ethereal is the three-piece metal band out of Salt Lake City, Utah, and a badass metal band at that. Please come out and support them if you're in the Utah area on their shows that they've mentioned. They're going to throw some great shows out there. I know none of you ghouls and gals will regret it. It's going to be a blast. If I could be there, I would definitely be attending the shows because I definitely want my own Become Ethereal shirt or button. With that being said... Thank you again, Become Ethereal, for coming on. Thank you, James, Mariana, and Mike. This has been awesome. Yeah, thank you. Great. Right on. Well, ghouls and gals, like always, thank you for talking about music and horror with us, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Hey, clap. We should all clap. That was a great great job. All All right, there you have it. That was my interview with Become Ethereal. Like I said, a really cool band. Uh, You really do see that they just, no matter where they're at, they're just like, we're going out there to play music and we're going to keep making music and, you know, we're, we're going to go out and do these great shows. And I just loved hearing that from the man. I love hearing that perseverance and more power to them. A big thank you again to become ethereal for coming on this hit for coming on the show and, and talking about the band and talking about their journey. I really appreciate it again. Please like, and follow them. You go to the links below and you can do that and get them some support while you're at it. And, you know, I'm always going to say it and uh, push it forward. Support your indie scene. If you're in Utah or if you're in Denver or Texas or wherever, please support your indie scene and uh, support underground music. With that being said, let's jump into the song that they sent us, Shadows of History. (laughs) 